So, okay, so he does decide to try and force things with Rook C6. And... Yeah. Again, maybe he's just calculated some line that he can actually give up F6 at some point and just... Run with the king. Run with the king. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would believe in that strategy more if black had a, had a bishop instead of a knight. Yeah. Um, then it would be pretty clear. Cut, I guess, to, to hold that. Uh, that yeah, but let, let's just uh, imagine you put a position like king, black as king c5 and the bishop on c6, mm -hmm. and then rook f6, a5, or something like yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't I say guess, that's clear cut, but probably is a draw. I guess it's easier if you had a bishop to give up uh, the bishop for this pawn eventually when the time comes. With a knight, it's not always easy to give it up for a plus pawn. Uh, exactly. Um, obviously, for, for white, having a uh, H pawn would be even more favorable since uh, the knight has uh, short legs, but even uh, even a G pawn is uh, as far away as to to cost the knight a lot of a lot of problems. Yeah, and I mean after rook c6, I was about to say it's a big decision for Fabi, but um, I mean if he doesn't play rook takes c6, probably there's even less chance of. Uh, well, I mean, okay, there's yep. also threats. There's <laughs> also threats there. Uh, well, rook b2. Rook b2, okay, but it'll be very similar. Uh, um, I may or may not. Maybe he's trying to find a concrete way to to win the pawn, mm -hmm. and then he thinks he'll deal with uh, with the fortress later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, interesting. So maybe I mean maybe maybe he just believes that after rook c6, knight c6, black has enough counterplay on the queen side. Mm -hmm. Could be. So yeah, I guess rook b2 would be a way of delaying the counterplay on the queen side. Um, then again, a5. Um, um, speaking of outflanking, maybe he has ideas of rook c6, knight c6, and then the immediate king king march. Ah, okay, to bring the king up this way. Yeah. Oh, that's clever. Um, that's very clever, yeah. King h3, maybe your king g3 first. Or maybe king f7 to g6. Uh, okay. But still, uh, rook f3, knight e5, rook g3, king h6, sort of holding on. Yeah. Or maybe rook g8 now? G8? Uh, or king h7 still. No. Uh, what was your idea? Oh, your idea is to come back around. Yeah. 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 Okay, king h7, and yeah, we'll win this pawn, but is it enough? Yeah. At least we'll learn some endgame theory tonight, won't we? Uh, yeah, we, cer we certainly will. Um, I do have I do have the feeling that even with the pawn on G G two I'm sort of liking the knight on H six on H six yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know yeah it's quite possible knight, then to F five and maybe a, H four later on yeah so. white tries to bring the king around so mm -hmm. black has so the black least, king here and then knight here maybe black has a, something resembling a fortress mm -hmm. at the very least this yeah this He'll make I you believe probably, in them. I probably should know whether this is a win or a draw, but I, I'm I, I don't know. It's it wasn't in the uh, 100 end games you should know test that you did for Chessable. No, I, think so. <laughs> I, I won a, I won an end game against Vichy once, um, which was uh, which was. Um, um, I had uh, a B pawn against a D pawn mm -hmm. and rook against knight, okay. which was surprisingly tough. It sounds okay. it sounds easy, but it was surprisingly tough as well. And I think I beat Elianov as black with an F pawn uh, against a G pawn. Okay. Uh, but my pieces were relatively active as well. I pushed the pawn to F5. So I think that one is... Uh, a lot better, and his pawn was on g3. That that, that one was a lot more favorable for, for mm -hmm. black than, than this one is. Okay, I guess the knight has an extra file to use, like this h6 square, compared to when it's on the g file, uh, when the pawn's on the g file. Okay. Yeah, no, that sounds very logical, actually. Yeah. Uh, at least in, 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 uh, in my case, like the only safe square there was was an, on... Um, on on f4 and i think like if you try to put the knight on on h4 i think then f4 can co possibly come at some point and mm. uh even after you trade the pawns you're winning because the knight cannot return yeah so i guess uh yeah, the main thing we've learned to 
rook versus knight positions that's super tricky and yes <laughs> we, we've got news. one now we've got one now so um yeah i i guess at some point white might be able to win the a pawn it's not clear but um first of all he needs an idea and uh, and he has he has traded so. he has taken immediately yeah um so king g3 makes sense to me at least because it's not clear where you want the rook and okay so let's look at what what fabi has done Okay, so we have seen a few moves. Um, King g3 did come, king f7, and now rook c2. Okay. It looks and like the a6 pawn, a6 pawn's about to fall, no? No, Maxim clearly believes in uh, the fortress rather than yeah. the counterplay. So yeah, the the um, the a f a6 pawn is falling by force now. So it's now it's just going to be uh, a long, long. Yeah. It's purely objective Dance now. Of against knights. Yeah. It's whether it does hold this position or whether or not. Um, wh when did you say that you didn't believe in Fortresses, Magnus? That was a few years back, right? Uh, yeah, that was in. Uh, uh, that that was during the World Championship uh, match in 2016. Have you amended your statement since then, or do you still believe fortresses don't exist, at least in practical sense? You've been mentioning fortresses a lot today. <laughs> I, I haven't, I haven't changed my mind too much. I think they can generally be broken down more often than people think. But uh, obviously, there are loads and loads of exceptions to to uh, to all 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 rules. So you cannot say anything too generally. generally. Yeah, one exception that does come to my mind is uh, the finals of the previous tour uh, with your rook on b6 against Hikaru, the Armageddon. <laughs> that might have helped in changing your mind about fortresses. That's like the ultimate fortress, right? I, I, I don't I don't agree. Like, I understand that some positions are fortresses. <laughs> okay, so I, um, I just put uh, the position after after, um, let's say, rook... 95. 95. Rook a2, king g6. Did you still want to put the knight on h6 as black? Uh, okay, this is super interesting. Okay. Uh, let's say rook knowledge. g6. King g6. King g6, rook a6. So I put, I put the position on table base with the king on f7. Mm -hmm. And then white is winning. Wow. This exact okay. position with the king on f7. Yeah. Wow. Um, and white, white is winning after either king f4. Let's make this happen. Reasonable. Let's make this happen. OK. Um, does it matter where the rook is? King g6 and then oh, okay. OK6, king f7. OK. Yeah. King f4 wins. Mm -hmm. And uh, good luck f finding the other move that wins. <laughs> so it's not king h? No, king h4, king g6. Oh dear. Um, <laughs> also, why does I'm king stumped. f4 win? I mean, we need to understand that. Why does king f4 win? Is it because after king g6, you want to go g4 or what is it no g4 well there's no g4 i don't think you should do uh maybe i don't know to be honest three. maybe yeah maybe rook a3 and then maybe rook a3 you yeah check and you get that it makes perfect f5. sense uh-huh this okay, explains makes... a lot this explains a lot so you, get, you get your check it, it doesn't explain why rook d6 also wins <laughs> <laughs> instead of king f4 in this position rook d6 okay and after king f4 Rook king g6, rook d6, and rook a3 win. The rest are drawn. So, so only two moves win here, rook d6 and rook a3. Won. Okay, rook a3 is sort of self-explanatory, since black cannot put it, um, uh, get the best defensive setup. And I think after something like knight c6, uh, yeah, knight c6 is the best defense, I guess. Oh, king e4 is by far the best move here. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. You're trying to come in this way. This is not easy at all. Yeah, this is certainly not easy. But I, I, 
I, it makes sense. It makes sense that you're eventually outflanking, and as you mentioned, Jesse Penko style, you get the king to mm-hmm. to to uh, to h5. Mm-hmm. I mean, feels like in the current position, then if Black has the extra tempi, I mean, what's the drawing setup? If I mean, you mentioned that um, White is only winning after a few moves. So, for example, if we get to a situation like this, if White just takes a timeout and um, I mean, isn't quick enough to get king f4. Yeah, let's say rook b6. Yeah. King g6, I guess. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong position. Uh, I mean, uh, black must, there must be a specific way okay, that but, needs to set up then. Um, does it hold? So here it says that, uh, let's say you put the, with in this position with, uh, with black to move. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, okay. Pretty much all reasonable moves hold. Okay, so all reasonable moves. So you don't need a specific setup. Okay, I, just... yeah, knight, knight f7, knight c4, king g5, mm-hmm. king f5. Okay, well. Um, and knight, yeah, knight f7, knight c4, king g5, mm-hmm. and king f5 all draw. Okay, so as long as you essentially don't allow white to get king f4. Okay, well, let's say knight f7, knight f7. So. I want to see if it wants the setup that I mm-hmm. that I wanted. You're mentioning with yep. the knight on h6, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to give myself some props here. <laughs> knight You're allowed to do that. Knight h6 is a draw. All others move. All other moves lose. Wow. Okay. <laughs> that kind of makes sense in this exact position. <laughs> but uh, uh, well, why does okay knight e5? Uh, otherwise, c3. You get okay, this idea sure, again. Sure. Yeah. But this is the basic setup. But knight yeah. on h6. Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, I'll. I'll mention this to Gawain Jones next time he defends this exact ending. Also, uh, Maxine is still trying to hold on to the a6 pawn. So instead of going with the knight to e5, he's decided to go knight b4. But you know, I remember I had a similar, not exact, but a similar knight ending. And one of the ideas that comes to mind to win the a pawn is always to go rook c5. You stop a5 and then to go rook a5, rook a4. I don't know if that works here, though. Uh, you can also go rook c4. And then a5, you go a5, rook c5. Rook c5. Yeah. That, like that winning means. the a pawn is the least of white's worries here. Yeah. Isn't this a bit risky for black to put his knight so far away from its ideal setup? Um, potentially on h6. It's, I mean, now you need to go knight d3 back to e5 and you need king g6. Yeah, it is surprising. It's, yeah, you need several moves now as black to kind of create that fortress. I, I guess in case of rook c4, knight d3, mm-hmm. uh, rook a4, you get the same position. Yeah. But it, it is very surprising. It's only just in time though. It's only one or two. No, it's, it's only one move. As I, I mentioned, move, like yeah. Yeah. King F7 position is lost, King G6 position is drawn. Yeah. Um, so here, I mean, you really need to go King G6, and you really need to go Knight F7. And but you know, I, I mean, I'm, I could bet anything that understanding this difference that King F7 is lost and King G6 is a draw is not something that either of the players are aware of in this particular position. So oh, then, it's- I'm pretty sure about that as well. But but I think. Maxim probably has some understanding that knight on h6 is the best defensive setup. Mm-hmm. That would be my my guess, at the very least. Mm-hmm. So the the point with knight on h6 is that after you give a check on g3, your king doesn't get to f5. Uh, yeah, essentially. Okay, let me let me. Uh, just to understand how this is a fortress exactly. So the knight on h6 defends the f5 square, and then if you go rook h3, black can come back with the king to g6, not moving the knight away, uh, and making sure that you still don't have king f5. Yeah, okay, uh, I'm gonna take that all back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take everything I just said back. From what point? Or just uh, in general? Because uh, apparently after rook b3 in the position we had after knight h6. Um, in which position? This position? Yeah. Rook b3, okay. Uh, knight f5 is the only move to draw. Wow, okay. Okay, let's see why king g7 loses. Maybe white starts to come around now. King yeah, e4. king e4. Yeah. King f7. King d5. Mm. <laughs> nope, king d5 is a draw. <laughs> the most natural move You can move see that it's a draw. a draw. Can you tell us why is that a draw? <laughs> I would guess in this case, because you can activate the knight ah, f5. Okay. So you, yeah. may, you need Start to make you need to make a waiting move first. Yeah. Um, like rook c3 or rook h3 are the best move. Like oh, okay. so go rook, for some reason rook c3 is better than rook a3. Okay, <laughs> obviously. 
Um, knight g8. Mm -hmm. Now king d5. <sighs> nope. Okay, this is frustrating. <laughs> I think we need a few uh, days and to here, let this one Yeah, out. king f4 is by far the best move. Wins in 36. Rook c8 <laughs> wins in 40 moves and so on. King f4, king, didn't we just king come from King d5 that? wins in 43 moves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I guess King D5 is maybe the most instructive of those moves. King F4, it looks like we're going back to where we can. Okay, King F4 place. in here, Rook G3. Ah, okay, Zug Swang. Sort of. Okay, Knight G8. Knight G8. Knight G8 and King G4. Okay, yeah. this this one is now understandable. The, the king comes round. King comes to H5. This is one winning plan to kind of eventually come round the back, uh, come round the side. Um, Wow, I mean, this is so tricky. I'm just amazed that Maxime went into this, swapped rooks, and uh, the, the margin for error is so small now, right? Um, yeah. Okay, this... Okay, I mean... This is super interesting, though. Yeah, <laughs> even with the ideal setup. I mean, you did mention that the key move uh, in a position like... Sorry, in like position like this one is knight f5, just to stop rook g3. Um... But is there a big difference if I wait, knight h6, and I check, um, and then start coming around? I mean, it's still not obvious to me what the difference yep. is. I will, I will see to that. Yeah. I mean, it still looks like it's on the brink for black. Um, you've got to be super careful just to hold. I mean, maybe you just wait with knight g8, but um, either way. Uh, yeah. Tanya, what are you thinking? Okay, so... Predictions? Okay. This yeah, apparently, the... apparently before you push the pawn, knight um, knight h six doesn't hold. Uh, before you push the pawn, so yeah. Uh, so here after, okay, let's say rook b three. Okay. Uh, uh, after um, okay after knight f five. Oh, okay. After knight f five, rook b three. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Rook uh, knight d six oh. holds. Knight e seven holds. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Okay. Knight g7 holds, mm -hmm. knight d4 holds. Okay. And knight h6 loses for the reasons we talked about earlier. Okay. You get six wanged and yeah. what comes around the side. Um, okay, let's just let's just play g3 for white and see. After which move? Yeah, after knight d6, for instance. Knight d6, g3. Okay. Yeah, knight um, d6, knight f7, rook a3. Okay, so you rook somewhere. Yep. Now, now you can put a knight on h6. Okay. Because you don't and have rook g3 check. You just keep it there you don't have, much. And now, I th now I think you just have a fortress. Since mm -hmm. you, you will attack the pawn from from f5, once the pawn moves to g4, you will attack it from h6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, as soon as white's king starts coming, you attack the pawn from here. Yeah, And then you always attack the pawn and yeah. Any pawn trade will be an immediate draw, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So, so White actually needs his pawn on g2 in this position for any winning chances at all. Yeah. Uh, now you mentioned Magnus I'm... that the knight anywhere else except h6 on d6 or d4 or e7 is is holding for black. Um, can you explain why? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for example, White could even play a move like rook d3 and really narrow the margin for error. Like now, there's only pretty much two squares which draw, right? There's only these two, and that's not obvious at all. Why? That's uh, h6. Yeah. Uh, also, after rook d3 here, knight h4 <laughs> uh, with a with a knight on d6. Ah, okay, with a knight on d6. So um, if I just move, knight I'm d6, literally giving d3. up on life right now. Okay, yeah, knight f4, obviously. <laughs> Can I knight join the club, Tanya? <laughs> knight f5, obviously, holds. Uh, yeah. But knight e8 holds as well. Wow. I so mean... maybe knight g on g7 is the setup you need in this exact. I was told to never fianchetto your knights, but. Uh... I know. <laughs> but but it's, the best, it's the best defense against two bishops. Yeah, two bishops against the knight. Against you want to put the knight, knight here. The... It was but... taught. It was uh, thought to be drawn uh, at some point, but okay. yeah, yeah it's, it's not. It takes longer than 50 moves then, eh? or Depends on the situation. Oh, uh, yeah, it depends. Okay, so sometimes Fianchetto your knights. That's the sometimes moral of the story. Knight, yeah. But definitely not in the middle game. Uh, okay, so let's... Okay, so knight, let's go 98, for instance. Okay, 98. Okay, I, I'm just gonna... Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna check whether 
we're making conclusions based on mm-hmm. the information we have and, and that whether we're, we're just making the wrong conclusions. It's nice to know whether we can generalize at least or wh- like whether there's... Okay, so there, there is some sense in the world that if you make some move like Rook C3, then, um, then knight, D, uh, knight G7 does draw. Okay. So I'm in general... As does Knight D6, yeah. Yeah. So basically in general, if black can get a position, even with a pawn on G2, if you can get a king on G6 and get a knight on G7 against any white setup... Does that mean it should be a draw? I would guess Probably, so. Probably, right? Yeah. I would okay, guess so. so we can generalize about we... one thing, maybe. Uh, yeah. But with a knight on h6, it's sometimes a draw. <laughs> but uh, you have to not walk into a yeah. check. Or so, uh, don't listen to anything that I say. Uh, <laughs> just, just remember put it knights ta- on the rim. That's what we would say and conclude this. <laughs> <laughs> table, table base obviously knows better. Yeah. There must be some famous practical examples of this exact... It looks like there should be, right? Yeah, there yeah. must be. Yeah, but... but actually, uh, the knight 8 6 point that you made was quite uh, interesting, because after that, it's clear that white gets this idea of getting the king around to h5. And I think uh, that's the that's the plan that black needs to to stop, and he's doing that with putting the knight anywhere else except h 6 on the board. Mm-hmm. Still yeah. probably not easy, right? Practically, I'm sure if I was black here, I would probably lose... Uh, so, so, lose the game anyway. Yeah, basically you have to uh, achieve two things. The king cannot go to f5 and it cannot go to um, to h5. Mm-hmm. So since knight g7 achieves both, uh, it makes a lot of sense. And I agree with you. I Myself with uh, black, I would not be sure at all whether yeah. I, I would hold. Um, you'll be sure th- after today. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you'll... Uh, You'll still be thinking of um, can the king come around somehow? Mm-hmm. If white's king does come uh, come around, do you wait for the right moment? Okay, and... this is interesting. I will yeah. check it out. King e4. Because there's two strategies. Either you just sit tight and hope and <laughs> pray that you can't get uh, your foot Okay, this is broken, a funny... Or this you is... have to come forward later on. But... This is really funny. Um, okay, so find the only move that loses. It's pretty easy. F5. But, yeah, F5 <laughs> If I lose this, Never push your else is a draw. <laughs> okay, let's even King G five. That is counterintuitive because here you get cut off. G three, King H six, and the king is cut off, and you're still holding this position. Wow, for some reason, yeah. Wow. I mean, so it king feels D5? like you're. Pretty- uh, maybe it's just very specific here. You always get hit by Knight F five, and you can't maintain your rook on the G file. Yeah, because of some forks. Yeah, uh, like uh, Knight F five holds. Yeah. Also, uh, because there are forks, and also King H7 holds. Wow. Knight H5 holds. <laughs> oh, you can't um... <laughs> Obviously, obviously. So King H7, so you really can't get outflanked because uh, the king will always walk into some knight forks. I guess that's the idea. Uh, and if you put the same position, let's say you go, uh, here you go, uh, King uh, D4, King H7. Okay, just king, uh, king h6, mm-hmm. king d3. Mm-hmm. No, 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 uh, king king e4 instead of king d3. Okay, king e4. Yeah, this makes sense, but now you need to go king h7. King h7, okay. But n- I think holding the holding the king on... on uh, f7. F7 is obviously a lot... It's more sane. It's... Yeah. But this is a good advertisement for just putting a knight on g7, and uh, yeah. it seems like you have so many forks, so many ways to cut off the. Well, opponent. let's say, yeah, let's say you have the same position with the king on f7, then mm-hmm. any sensible move draws. So yeah, um, so just put the king back and. Yeah. Um, so and white can right. really never come round, right? Um, come round the side, king d5. Um, do you just sit? Do you just sit with your king on g6 and laugh at my attempts to make progress, or do you? Um, do you eventually reroute your knight, or maybe even go active with the king at the right moment? Do you attack yeah, the G- king? Attack king the G6, G six, for instance. Yeah, king D six. King F seven. Okay, king D. I don't know how I'm ever getting past that king. Um, yeah, let's say rook C five. Maybe rook C five makes sense. Yeah. Just to stop knight F five. Do you give a check and back to G seven maybe? Ninety-eight. Yeah, uh, King G six is fine. Okay, King G six. So you're really never worried about me. King E seven. Forward. 
do you go and attack the uh, you attack the G-pawn now? Okay, now only knight f5 holds. Knight f5, and you go to e3, and I can't actually defend this pawn in a good way. Yeah, let's say king f8. Mm -hmm. Knight e3 looks good, and now I mean, if you have to play g3, then I think we can go back to yeah. Knight d6 holds. Five, knight e3 holds. Knight g3 holds. Knight h4 holds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Knight h6 holds. Oh. Um, actually, really I, I think in this, yeah, in this case, it makes makes sense because mm -hmm. uh, you have too much counterplay. Yeah, and White's king it takes too long to get round, and yeah. even then, <laughs> even then, it's not clear where it's going. So, yeah. um, actually, a really interesting move by Fabi. He's played rook d2. So maybe now it's it's pretty hard to get this knight to g7. Um, you no, you just need to go back. Me. Yeah. Yeah, knight d6. Rook d2 is actually pretty tricky because you make sure that the knight doesn't come to d3 or d5. And he doesn't really go uh, go to pick up the a-pawn, but he's just trying to cut off the knight on b4. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now oh, that's good and maybe, try it. maybe if black does allow rook d6, then it could get tricky for black. So uh, having all that in mind, uh, probably the most technical for black was just to go knight d4 immediately. Um, so this position after rook c2, yeah. Uh, yeah, here. just aim for uh, g7 as quickly as yeah. possible. Put the king here, get that knight back as quickly as you can. And I, I don't see any way you can mm -hmm. you can uh, counter that plan. Yeah, also at some point you need two moves, three moves to take this, and by then the knight's on g7. Yeah. No, I would say, I mean, the, the a-pawn is the least of, of your worries, but you have to, have to take it at some point. Mm-hmm. So yeah, current position. How do let's just try and figure out a way to get back. I guess knight c6 immediately makes sense. Uh, knight c6, yeah. Still don't see how the knight's getting to g7 though. Okay. Uh, king g6. Okay. Rook d3. I don't know. Yeah, this is a little bit tricky now. Mm -hmm. So what's I would the problem guess... with knight e7 here? Yeah, 97, rook g3. Check. King f7. Yeah, or do you go king g4 then? King no. g4. Ah, oh, that's clever. Yeah. Uh, but then king g6. King g6. It's not so clear. No. Still not. not and, can you not just go and pick up this pawn at the right moment now? No, king g6. And uh, 9 f5, 9 g7. 9 f5, swang you. Oh. I'm going to try and be okay. sneaky. Okay, so 9 knight knight c6. <laughs> Uh, which way are you going around if I take? I go to d8. Uh, are you sure? How are you going to get? Uh, oh, I'm not. Am I? Oh, I'm not. I'm not sure actually. No. Um, if I just wait now. Uh huh. But instead Five, of knight d8. Hmm. How do you is win? this? Is this rook b3 knight d6 is a draw? Ah, uh, yeah, true. Oh, this is so tricky. <laughs> And also, you need to know this, that oh, knight belongs to g7, which is so hard to find over the board to understand this fortress that exists with knight g7. If you don't know it already, it's uh, very hard to imagine uh, uh, that anyone's able to figure it out over the board. Yeah, it's very, very hard indeed. You can maybe get there by process of elimination, just kind of trying to figure out where your knight needs to be and figuring out that half of them don't work. But it's not obvious at all. I mean, here, maybe I'm... Am I stopping you from getting there? Yeah, uh, no. You're not. No. Oh. This I just put the position. Even this. It's a draw. <laughs> even, <laughs> even this. But okay, this uh, requires I, I, I can uh, I can try to put in rook a6. Okay, one move. Oh, oh, whoops. Uh, <laughs> I just left it. Um, how were we getting there? Okay, this position, right? Rook a6. Yeah. One move. This we should already know, by the way. One move. Knight. So only one move holds here, is what yeah. you're saying? Oh wow. Oh dear. <laughs> Talk about pressure. Um, it's definitely a night move, at least. Yeah. <laughs> that far. That's how far I've got uh, so far. I would say knight h6 normally, but yeah, yeah. Because you uh, rook a3, you need knight f5. Yeah. You need either knight f5 or you need knight a, a uh, d6. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And rook a5. I think rook a5, just knight f7. Knight to be seven, rook d5. Ah, uh, okay, knight h6 and I still knight can't move. Knight h6 and you yeah. still... Ah, yeah, so tricky, so tricky. Um, but yeah, it's up to Maxime Vashiligraf to prove that he either knows this or can work it out. 
and that's that's far from a given. Yeah, so I don't know about you guys, but personally, I find this a lot more fun than Sharp Knight or <laughs> <laughs> sign of old age, Magnus. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, but it's, it's just really fascinating to see the the small differences, and I feel like when you when you see. Uh, I think you need sort of, you need table bases here because you it's so hard to figure out otherwise. Nice. Uh, and it's more about you, you try and understand it when when you see the um, and I feel like it's it's more useful than just checking engine lights uh, engine lines. That's the that's the one uh, in other in other types of um, positions. Yeah, I mean, at least today we can safely say we've learned something that might come in useful maybe one time in our life. That's um, the problem. Studying the Nidorf with an engine, you know, you've got to revise it hundreds of times and it still might not sink in. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the, that's the problem. Um, I find it, yeah, this is very interesting, but I'm not sure it's, it's indeed that useful. Then again, this is the second time I've seen this exact ending with the same pawns on the same squares and everything. Uh, second time I've seen it in three weeks, I think, so... But also, I don't, I don't think the moves really matter here. I think understanding this concept of what you said with the knight on g7, holding this f5 square, making sure the king can't come on the other side. I think even if we have that in our head at some point, it's impossible to remember these moves and know what works, what doesn't. But just understanding with an f pawn and a pawn on g2, you get your knight on g7 and your king on f7, and you can hope to hold this position. A better chances than, let's say, any other place uh, for the knight. So I think that can be useful, actually. It's yeah, I, I agree. Uh, it's definitely uh, it's definitely a, a tool that that you need both the uh, G7 um, G7 fortress and and also that you need to get the knight to F7. Uh, sorry, to F5 instead of instead of E5, which is somewhat counterintuitive. Very. Yeah. 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 I That's think it's the same in all. Because you want to put your knight central. Games. <laughs> go Sorry, on. You go, you go, Tanya. Ladies no, first. I was just saying, I was just carrying on with what he said that uh, the knight on e5 is where you want it intuitively. If you don't know this position, you feel the knight on e5 is where it belongs. Uh, but actually, f5 is the square where you uh, where you need the knight in several of these positions. And it's also important to to note, as we talked about earlier, that all of this is an issue because the white pawn is on g2. Mm -hmm. If the white pawn if the white pawn was on g3 or g4. Uh, you can just go by the principle of attacking the pawn with your knight. And at least that's the way I learned it. That you attack with the pawn, attack with the pawn with the knight, and they need to defend it with either the king or or the rook, which means that the I mean that's that's sort of um the it's the crux of the the position there. Yeah. In, in too many and incoherent words. <laughs> no, I was going to say it was the same. It's the same in all endgames. It's like we need to know one general principle often, but it's not going to be the same every time, right? So having that basic knowledge, combining it with having a bit of time on the clock to work things out in a practical situation. And here, just knowing that a knight belongs on G7, you can work out the details later. It's still not easy, but um, if, you do get, if you do get it over the board sometime. Um, but yeah, definitely learned something today. And knight, knight on G7 covers both the d uh the h5 square and the f5 square so it makes it makes a lot, a lot of sense that way can we find out and we have the position on the board uh oh let's jump back to this one uh okay and uh so here we have the question we have the question again if rook a3 what is the only only way to make Knight a draw. Knight d6. Knight d6. That's it. We've learned something today. So rook a3, planning this one. You need to cover <laughs> the f5 square so the white king can't step forward. And now we will see what happens test, after we, the break. We passed the Magnus test on this position. Let's take a break. <laughs> And I'm yeah. going to call on Magnus on what is happening in the Fabi board because uh, we have the kind of positions that we've been looking at. Knight on oh. h6. Uh, Magnus, you must be ecstatic right now. <laughs> is this, I think this is still a draw though, no? It's still a draw. Knight f7. Knight d6 comes with Knight f7, check. rook e3, and then knight d6. So clearly Fabi has grasped the idea that he needs to prevent knight f5. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah, Knight of Seven is a draw. Yeah, if but if the king was on f4, it wouldn't be a draw. Um, <laughs> after rook a3, if the king was here, no, it would still be a draw. Ah, uh, it would still Knight be a draw. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting confused. We went through this. We went through this. We need, yeah. How do we it's get... Still, <laughs> still not easy. How um, do we get this position with a rook on d3 and the king on f But yeah, knight of, knight of seven is a draw. Is knight of seven the only move that black has here, Magnus? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. So this is a very critical moment for Maxime, actually. Oh, okay, this is interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, knight, of, knight of seven, king d5. One move. Only one move. Normally I would say king f5. King f5? Yeah. 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 So you start Just to move. shoulder. Shoulder off the white king. And, and rook a1? Threaten to get active maybe. Oh, only one move again. Yes. <laughs> 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 okay, this one's less easy. Um, my g5 feels correct. Somehow. My g5. Rook f1, king g6, mm -hmm. uh, and now uh, rook f4 wins, <laughs> so, uh, rook f2 wins, king d6 wins. Yeah, I guess we get Rook f4 is by far the best move. We get Zug swanged sooner yeah. or later. Yeah, it will. Uh, it will get pushed, pushed uh, back here. This knight is far away from g7. And uh, yeah, once you go f5, then mm -hmm. your knight is no foothold. Yeah. So, okay, so not knight g5. I'm going to need your help soon, Tanya. Yeah, I'm trying to think what's going on here because if you go king g4, you've got rook f1, so that doesn't. Uh, king e6, sorry, so that's not in time. And what happens if you come back with? Yeah, what happens if you come back with the king? King g6, yeah. Yeah, I guess king e6. Yeah, king e6 wins. Yeah, right. the problem is our knight. Our knight needs to be back here so it can give checks. Yeah. Now our knight on g5 is actually quite bad. So th this is worth mentioning though. Uh, like, king is two diagonal squares away from the knight, then it can never be checked. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a good place to be. Yeah. It's really good for blitz and bullet games so you don't get forked. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's it's true. From knight g from g7, mm -hmm. white cannot actually get to one of those squares true c3 <laughs> a long way away <laughs> yeah um yeah so not in g7 you can't kind of create this motif because where you can't get checked. because the square you would love to go to is e5 mm -hmm. oh that's quite instructive so i mean I, I don't know i'm making this up on the go but it makes sense right <laughs> <laughs> yeah so knight on g7 you can't get this whole diagonal formation oh whoops ah me and my arrows uh the king can't be diagonal away from the knight so it will never be Wait, safe did we checks. find a way did we find a way for black to hold here? We haven't we haven't found it yet, we Tanya. Yet. This position, <laughs> one move to save. Okay, I, I'm not getting no, this wait. at all. So with with it's gonna be knight h6. <laughs> with black to move, knight h6 is the only way to hold. Yeah. <laughs> Process of elimination, I got there, man. Yeah, and with um, white to move, it's a draw. This position. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, so he played rook a3, and now he has to play knight d6, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, now he has to play knight... I, I'm not sure he has to play knight d6. Uh, knight d6, king d5, knight f5, and we get what we want. Then, then we get we? We want what we want, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but does uh, knight h 6 work as well here? But after knight h 6 you go rook g3, and then you get the king on h5. Yeah, we give a check, and then, oh, still tricky. It's I think we go this stuff. way. This is absolutely insane. I think this is Zugswang, because the line we mentioned earlier is, okay, black doesn't really want to move the king away, but if you go back, now the king can step across and yeah. check. Uh, you have to defend the knight, and now the king, now the king goes comes up far. this way. Yeah, It's so. still not an easy win, but uh, you can sort of understand how the white king comes around to yeah. g7 and... Yeah, once you come here, I think you just check from this side, you force the black king away, and then you eventually step in. Um, but, okay, I mean, that's that's not easy at all. And, okay, rook a3, he's still thinking. How was that line, how did that line go that we had that narrow path for black a moment ago? Was it knight d6 here, no? That's what uh, we, we were going king at? d5 in the last position, no? Um, uh, yeah, we were going king d5. So maybe this was g5 
justice testing. Justice testing and black needs to go king f5 in order to make a draw. Yeah. Then after rook a1 had to go had to go knight a6. That's not knight h6 that, especially is difficult. Yeah, because especially if you realize it, that in other lines knight f6 is not h6 is not desirable. Yeah. Um, and that's crazy. Not H6 here. It's not, <laughs> it's not obvious at all, I think. Um, okay, so. And what's the point after Knight H6, Rook F1? Where do you go yeah, with this? Yeah, this is still very interesting. Okay, so King D5, um, Knight H6 here, Rook F1. Doesn't matter whether we go to G6 or G5. Please say no. Yeah, King F5, <laughs> Rook A1, Knight H6, Rook F1. Uh, King G5. Not King G6? Yeah, King G6 is also yep. a dress. Okay. okay. But and let's say King G5. Six? Yeah. King E6? I'm, I'm guessing you just push F5. Wow, so now... Yeah, that, F5, only move. Yeah. So now uh, that White's King is, is far yeah. away from the defense of this pawn, we're going to eventually go for it, I guess, at the right moment. Yeah, that's what you mentioned in the Gawain Jones game. Yeah. Right? That in, yeah. That, in some cases, you can actually... Mm -hmm. Okay, let's... What's a random move here? Rook f3, let's just say. Oh, king g6 makes a draw, but f4, f4 is by far the easiest. Okay, f4, yeah. And we do have some checks if the king attacks our Rook a3. Um, rook a3 here. Yeah. <laughs> king um, really walking a tightrope. Um, king. Can you go king g4 here or is that too dangerous? Yeah, king g4. Uh, knight g4 I think is the easiest though. To go mm -hmm. to e3. Yeah. Oh, uh, nice. Rook a5. Rook a5, we have king h4. Mm -hmm. And if king a5, king g3. So let's try rook a8. Okay, instead of rook a5, right? Yeah. I am absolutely stunned that Maxime has played knight d6 on the board. He's found it. That is, found that is amazing. Knight f5. And knight f5. That is incredible chess. I mean, we're well, this doing is a nice a line, actually. Rook a8, knight e3, rook g8, king h4, king e5, take g2. Bro. Wow. And Wait, I mean, this oh. is after after a series of only moves to find this at the end. <laughs> um, yeah, and no matter what happens, white will not be able to okay, so, stop this point. Yeah, uh, basically, Fabi, he, I think that was his only chance. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah, had he could force Maxim to I mean play virtually I would say superhuman defense there. I mean that was maybe six or seven only moves out of or maybe okay, five or six only moves out yeah. of eight. I mean that's not easy for any human. For sure. I don't know about you and Magnus here, Dave, but the entire game feels like one superhuman defense effort by Maxime and this position included, which we have on the board right now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's right from an early stage. That's what I'm. Well, what I'm saying, the guy is uh, is a beast. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, imagine even getting caught in kind of superhuman preparation, um, even in a difficult middle game really difficult endgame as well and now when it's kind of walking a tightrope um, is there any way for caruana to kind of rotate and get back to that position of trying to get king d5 uh, or is that that small practical chance disappeared must be a way somehow i don't think so because the knight is knight is so well placed on g7 and f5 ah uh, yeah the knight just gets to g7 now right yeah yeah maybe that chance is gone is I mean, if if uh, if Maxim holds, that's going to be super frustrating for for Fabi. Like he's a level-headed guy in general, but even for him, that must be yeah. must be frustrating because he he's done as far as we we can see, he's done everything correctly here. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Yeah, he didn't miss any big chances, Fabi. He's just been putting the pressure on consistently, yeah. right? I mean, that'll be a huge. Huge advantage on the clock. He got his preparation in, and he's been playing everything uh, really well so far. And but Maxime is just up to the task in every position that we've seen in this game. The opening phase, the end game, just all of it. And now knight f5, knight g7 coming in. I'm, I'm loving it. Yeah, huge confidence boost for Maxime. Just he'll look back and think, actually, that's pretty much perfect. If he makes a draw, if we will, we will still. He's uh, gone. 
He's gotten this far. And you know, earlier when you were describing all these positions uh, with the king and knight and these defenses, uh, Magnus, it was just going over my head so much. But now that I've, I'm seeing it happen on the board, uh, it's just so much easier to understand what Maxime is aiming for and what he wants in this position. So he's gone for rook d3 and now knight g7. He's played knight h6 instantly. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, that's losing. That's, we mentioned this. this knight, knight e7 or, or knight g7. Knight g7 is by far the most obvious. Mm -hmm. We actually discussed this before, that you can go knight g7, and after rook g3, you can even afford to go king h6 or king h7 to make a draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so knight but, yeah, but knight h6 just loses. Now, I guess the problem is check and Zugzwang, right? After, after king e4. King yeah. e4. And Let's just white. check that real quick. I mean, it's still not 100% easy, right? If white, black just goes knight g8, for example. Um, knight g8, how do we break through? Yeah, still not 100% obvious, but um, it does feel like black's put his knight on a bad circuit now. Um, white's king can't still, well, can't come in this way because of check and some forks. So we have to find a way to somehow um, sneak around this way again. So if you go king f4, what's going on? We get the same position after knight at 6 uh, Maybe this time we go king f5. But knight oh, six this is nice. Back? And then king f4. And maybe you triangulate. Oh. So now we yeah. have this position, but with white to move. Now it's black to move. Mm -hmm. And if black tries the same defense, knight g8, then this time we sneak around and we get to h5. Um, and yeah, if he, I guess if black moves the king, then, um, okay, there must be a way now. I think rook h3. Rook h3, yep. Knight f7, I guess. And Knight f7, rook e3. Rook e3. And then we come this way, finally. And then we check, and then we get our king to f5. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, so it's still not easy for Fabi, but, um. But he's gone rook g3, so now he has to find king e4 in this position. Yeah, but that's sort of self-explanatory. Uh, you need to make a waiting move. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the best move here would be pass. <laughs> <laughs> if only that was legal. Pa pass would be uh, an immediate Zugzwang, but king e4 is... Uh, oh, he's done it. He's done it. He needs to channel his inner yeah, this is, and pass. <laughs> this is strange, though, um, that Maxim... He took, what, three seconds to go knight h6? Yeah. Because, yeah, he had the same thoughts that I had. Uh, he probably remembered that the knight belongs on h6 uh, in some, some, some variations here. And then uh, he didn't realize that the circumstances were very different here and that you need, a, you need the knight on g7 instead. Which, as we spoke about, is... is um, it's logical because the knight on g7 covers both key squares on f5 and h5. Yeah. Mm. Like you now, say, maybe, now his knight is just stuck on a bad circuit. Yeah. Like you say, maybe he just recognized or remembered um, that with white pawn on g3 or white pawn on g4, h6 is the perfect square pretty much because from there it can attack some pawns, well, attack white's remaining pawn. But um, yeah, I, I do notice Magnusim, he does occasionally rush. Um, I mean, it, normally he has it all worked out in advance, but... So what's the move you looked at? Knight, knight, uh, G8. knight G8 and then... King F5? Yeah. King F5. King F5, knight H6, King F4, yeah. Yeah, this is nice. And how about if the knight checks from the other direction? How do we get through with white? I uh, would guess King F4. King F4 again and... Maybe this is not... Maybe we messed this up. Mm -hmm. Still not completely... And after... Uh, after knight g8, you go king g4. And king g7, that's king f5, and you just take the knight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice, yeah. But knight... But knight d5? Knight d5, yeah. Um, hmm. Because every time we go king g4 now, the king's going to try and step across and block our path in uh, via h5. Yeah, it's still not easy. So knight... Okay, so in the current position, it looks like knight g8 is kind of the... The only way to... Um... Okay, it has been played, knight g8. Uh, yeah, it was, was uh, by process of elimination clearly the... Uh, toughest defense. Toughest defense, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so, okay, Fabi, I mean, he's just like Maxime, he's very good at calculating these end games. He'll be, I mean, he'll be trying to get a way to, he'll be trying to work out a way to get his king to h5 with white, but king f5. King f5, I mean, king f5 might feels e7. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, what else other than king f5? King, king f3. King f3. He's gone for king f5. There's, mm -hmm. there's still uh, 97 though. Yeah, so king f3, king f5, probably similar. And uh, now we've worked out, we've seen this a couple of times, knight h6 does lose, oh, I mean, Zug Um which is quite nice, but knight e7, how do we crack this one? So king f4, uh, you want to go knight d5 check? Mm-hmm. Ah, can we... Okay. Hmm, I'm struggling here. King e4, knight e7. King g4, king g6. How do we get this king into black's position? Yeah, so I mean... Yeah, this e7. is... Uh, apparently king f5 was quite imprecise. Okay, what else should white have done here? I mean, I don't think he spoiled anything, right? He can still get this position again um, before King f5. He can still come back here, but um, instead of King f5, Rook a3, Rook a3 King g6. Hmm. We're definitely going to need those table bases. To help yeah, us. it's not working at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it, Maybe a lot of people are. The whole world is analyzing Rook and Pawn against the Knight of Pawn right now. So this is the second time we've seen this position. Maybe he I'm just had to repeat. I called it. Dave, I called it. Magnus, I called it. I think we're gonna, um, it's gonna end soon, this one. King f7 and... There's still some chances though, surely. I mean, if, uh, even while we can't get the move? table base back. Oh, there's, okay, now I actually got it. Back. Okay. And it's a draw. It is a draw. Yeah. So, I mean, if this is a draw, just before we uh, analyze why it's a draw, if we can backtrack, where was yeah, the best win? Yeah, I was gonna do. I mean, it must be in this position after knight g8. King f5 is the most natural move and Fabi played it, but maybe it just allowed Black's Knight back out. Um, but it's hard to think what else other than King f5. And what was the problem with, oh, King d5, you go Knight e7 because King d6 does Knight f5, so you can't come from this side either. Yeah, you can't come. Okay, from let's say Rook a3. Um, so oh, this knight, is the one. So Knight g8, Rook I'm, a3. I'm starting, I'm starting to get this slowly. Okay. So or am I? <laughs> Maybe I'm not. Talk us through it, Magnus. Rook a3 yeah, in this position. Idiot. Okay, rook a3. Okay. King knight a7. Knight e7, is that the only way? Probably. Uh, king g6, you start going the other way. King d5. Ah, okay. Yeah, because there's so no this... fork anymore on f5. Yeah, so king way, d5 is it. actually a threat. Mm -hmm. So knight e7. Let, let me uh, make sure that I'm not feeding you false information. Here. <laughs> Maybe we can somehow pin that knight and then run over to the other side. But it's not clear how. So, I mean, what I would want to do is somehow bring the king, but it's still not easy because after check, there's a fork. Hmm. Okay, so what was the position? position uh, okay, here? so rook a3, you were saying 97, right? Yeah, uh, king g6. Uh, so King G let's say King G6. Okay. Uh, I, w I was about to feed you false information. <laughs> <laughs> Fake oh, this is so fr frustrating. <laughs> I thought the idea was to go King D5 here. No, King D5 is a draw. Yeah, there was one line earlier where we never Knight E7, King E6, Knight of 5 draw. Ah, uh, yeah. Because it's, it's all about it's this all square. square. All about fee and kettoing those knights. Yeah. Um, wow, this is a maze. So knight g8, rook a3, king g6. How do we win this one? Oh, we have to go for that sig swang again somehow. Oh, this is mind boggling stuff. Yeah, even yeah. a world champion, even with uh, <laughs> armed with a table base. It's, uh, yeah, it's yeah. tricky to generalize. 
And the life, pos the position that we have on the life board, I think it's been repeated already. King F5, 97, we've had that before. Okay. King E4. So let's check out the life position just while we try and work out where the missed win um, was earlier. And King Knight G8 this time. Um, yeah, we have had this before. You're right, Tanya. Yeah, it looks very familiar. I feel like we've had it about five million times in the last one hour. <laughs> I think this is only the second yeah. time we've reached this position. <laughs> Magnus, did you find the win that was missed or the point? Studying these types okay, of games yeah, can be so tilting. Move here, it's winning. It oh, is wow. white move. It's winning. Okay. It is winning. Uh, okay, there are so rook g5 and rook g8 draw, rook g7 and rook g6 loses. <laughs> All other moves win. All other moves win. Wow. So if we don't blunder that's our rook. Beautifully explained. <laughs> Thank you. That's that's what I'm here for. So apparently it's there is some Zug starting position. I just I'm just just not completely getting what it is. So let's try rook a three again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, let's try king g six as we talked about. Rook b three. After rook a3? Uh, rook a3, king g6, rook b3. Wow. Apparently this is so so king f7. Ah, now king f4 wins. Knight h6, rook g3, duke swung. Ah, back to this old position that we, <laughs> we had about oh. <laughs> three hours ago. <laughs> okay, so this is the position you need. Mm -hmm. So with the king on f4, so let's memorize this one. Black to play, it's winning for white. So yeah, because now position, knight g8, you get king g4, and there's no way that white, black can come with the king to the other side. Yeah. Yeah, so king king f4, rook g3 against rook knight h6 and king f7 is sort of a mutual zugzwang. So white has to maneuver to, to get that position. Mm -hmm. With, uh, with black to move. So to get there from the start position. Okay, Fabi's played rook h3, which um, is one I'm of the sure, windows. Yeah, it also wins. Uh, um, but I think the whole idea is that you just have to wait now again. Um, you have to pass and you have to go this way probably. Um, rook b3 or rook a3 or uh, somewhere along this side. So now black's a bit stuck. Do you think the players are feeling this at all? Do you think either of them have, what is their objective evaluation of this position? Or are they just playing move by move and not thinking? Or do you believe that Fabi can actually feel that he's close uh, to? What, what I think is that Fabi's, uh, he's seen the position, he's had the position after King F4, Knight H6 with white to move before. So, I think he sort of, um, I think he feels that that position is winning by, by, uh, with, uh, with, uh, or at, I don't know if it's knows, if he knows that it's winning, but he knows that he can make progress there. And that's really what it's all about. Um, you, it's hard step to know whether it's winning, right. but you can know whether you're making progress. Mm -hmm. And he's, I think he's finding, uh, he's trying to find a way to um, to make to make that happen, to get that position. I just have the feeling that he doesn't know how, and I can't can't blame him because we're struggling with that as well. Yeah, even with that table base, it's... even with uh, even with table base, this one is because you know the idea. The idea is very clear. You need the king to h5, um, but it's uh, it's far from easy to get it. Yeah, I mean, so rook rook h3, I guess now if. Uh, king g6, you have the same idea. Rook b3, mm -hmm. king f7, and king f4. Mm -hmm. And now if black does play knight, <laughs> knight g6, g3. finally. Yes, finally. Yeah. finally. Zook Zang. And what <laughs> happens if, or, yeah, this way as well, we win because I guess we step to the side again. Yeah, now we, uh, we get in. 
And um, instead, I mean, what else can Black do? Knight e7, that's the only other way. But now, now rook b7. Now we pin. And we go around. And then we win by coming around. So this idea, yeah, you get the king to h5 by force pretty much, right? Yeah. Um, so the key idea, pretty much no matter what Maxime does, especially, I mean, especially after king g6, is just to wait. Yeah. And that's not 100% obvious, but maybe you'll get there by a process of elimination. Oh, it's, it's a lot less than 100% obvious. Mm -hmm. 97. Um, so king f7, king f4 is a... By this point, the relatively clear is Duke's fine. Yeah. So knight e7 instead. Now we have to be pretty accurate because we can't go like rook b7, knight f5, allow the knight back to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would guess we'd like to move knight f5 just draws. Mm -hmm. So can you go rook b5 here? But then we can never get to g3. So maybe just knight back to g8. And if we go rook g3, king f7, we get we get uh, something you had already. Yeah, we've reached this position before. So that wow, doesn't make any G6, sense. King g6 on the board. Hmm. So Dave, what was the problem after rook oh, b5? Rook b5, rook b5 maybe. Rook b5 and if knight g8 again? King, king d5. Oh, king oh d5. now we go. Wow, uh, maybe. This is very similar, similar oh, to Oh, wait a sec. Earlier. Maybe after knight g8. Why can't you go king f4 in this position? I have a king f4, knight e7. Mm. Mm -hmm. We've been there. Maybe then yeah. you can wait. King f4, because... knight e7, rook c5, let's say. But king f4, can we not go knight h6 again? Then rook b3, and then king f7, rook g3. Rook, rook b3, knight f5. Oh, uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh. Okay, so how about this? Knight h6, rook a5. Mm. No, the knight f7 is a draw. <laughs> <laughs> because, because of rook a3, knight d6. I've got a question for you, Magnus. Is this the most frustrating commentary session you've ever had? No, <laughs> I, I, it's slightly frustrating, but most of all, it's super, super fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> Would you rather be banter blitzing with some kids or studying this end game this evening? <laughs> I can do yes, both. You don't that's have fine. to choose, Magnus. You don't have to choose. Uh, 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 that's both. fine. Uh, we're gonna start. We're gonna start from the. That's gonna be the magic blitz. We're gonna start from the start of this ending, <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna be white in every game and let the kids try and hold it. I'm probably gonna get forked in a few of them and lose, <laughs> but that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I kind of want to see that now, but. Uh... <laughs> Make it happen. Um, <laughs> wow, yeah. I mean, even after a couple of hours, I mean, it's still hard to tell exactly what position is winning, exactly what uh, position. Oh, wait, wait a second. Let's let's go back three. for let's go back to the. Mm -hmm. He's so played rook a three, by the way. To uh, uh, to Grishik's game. Okay, um, just, yes. just one sec. So rook a three, we've seen something very similar to this. So uh, while Vasily de Graaf tries to work out the most tenacious defense. Um, this one has oh, changed. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought the rook on a was an a7 still. Ah, okay. And then what would be winning? e6. No, no, the oh, never mind me. I thought it was an um, was a trap with uh, uh, e6, king f6, king e7, king f7, rook f6, king f6, <laughs> e8, rook d7, and king e4, rook. A2, but you can just take and do something. Uh, okay. Never mind, never mind. <laughs> never um, mind. Uh, yes, so in this position, okay, just to show the last couple of moves after bishop b4, we saw this. Um, black activated his rook. And, wow. I mean, the most obvious moves are rook b7 or e6, but rook b7, I guess, doesn't achieve too much. After rook c7, back. Yeah. Um, E6, is he still planning to come forward, I guess? You don't really want to go to E8. Yeah, you certainly go forward. Hmm. I don't think white is achieving a whole lot. E7, King F7. Yeah. Rook here. Rook D8. Uh, then you want to go Rook D7 or what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just trying yeah. to trick you. <laughs> trying yeah, to promote my port. Unstoppable. But, um, but maybe you can just drop back to C7. Maybe like this? Mm, yeah. Although this is a bit shaky. 
so if you're taking d6, yeah. uh, it doesn't work. No, does not work? Rook, 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 rook down rook here. Yeah. yeah. And we're stopping this. Um, well, we're going to give a check. So maybe not quite working for white, but... Yeah, I mean, you can push the pawn to e7, and mm -hmm. you're probably never losing, but I don't think you're winning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean in this position? Yeah. Yeah. No way to break through. We need this rook in the f-file somehow again. <laughs> yeah, it's easier said than done. Yeah, we need this pawn on g5. Um, yeah, it takes too long. So rook c2, what else could Alex Inko be thinking about? He's played e6. Okay, he's played e6, so... Yeah, king f6 seems to be given. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, let's go back to the other one briefly. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing I should point out white shouldn't play here is king d6. I was about to suggest because of rook d8 mate. That would be nice. Uh, that's that a nice spot. <laughs> <laughs> that would be uh, a pretty bad trap to fall into. But um, yeah, as we say, in this current position, um, still balanced. Uh, but chances for both sides. Okay, the other one. King f7, king f4. This is correct, right? Because now this is the position we're aiming for. Rook g3. Rook g3. This okay. is the one position we've worked out. <laughs> yes. That we know. Uh, okay, so the question was, after knight e7, mm -hmm. how wide was to win? Knight e7. <sighs> but were we not just pinning? Pinning here, rook a7, and then going king g4, king h5. Is that not? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, we pin black. No, 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 but I'm talking about earlier. Ah, okay. I'm talking about, okay, let's go a couple of moves back. Okay, I mean, this is the current position with the... Yeah, instead of, uh, instead of king f7, with the king ah, g6. Okay. Um, so here. Here, knight e7. Knight e7, yeah. That was clearly the most tenacious because rook g3, king f7, king f4 is something already tried with the king. Uh, uh, we've seen this before. Yeah, we've seen this. Yeah, so king, f, king f7 maybe just allowing. I mean, like you said, Fabi probably realized this quite a long time ago, this Sug Zwang. And yeah. now knight e7. Yeah, here we were still struggling slightly to find the winning plan. Yeah, uh, but I feel like it must be based on rook to the fifth and yeah. then... Some Zug Swang and then knight g8. Um... Then king d5. Yeah, it must be to do with the... Oh, whoops, sorry. Um, must be to do with coming in here. But obvious is it? It is not. Yeah, still some chances there for black. But, but in the game, are there any chances at all after king f4? King f4 I mean, if... now? Yeah, everything's leading to Rome, right? Everything's... I don't think there are. No, I think now it's pretty straightforward. Uh, what's, Tanya, the line after, what's the line after... Yeah, king g6 here, you just go rook g3 and you go king g4. So you get yeah. what you want with your king on h5. Mm -hmm. And instead of king g6, if knight h6, we also get what we want. If knight e7, rook a7. So what is black's uh, move here to keep the game going? Yeah, king g7, rook g3 is the same. King g7, rook g3, king f7, king g4, king yeah. G4. Yeah, and here we go here. And forward, finally. But yeah, current position then. Oh. I mean, now it's just a, uh, it's just a matter of choosing kind of the lesser evil, right? How do you even create any chances of... I don't know, not necessarily counterplay, but once white's king gets into h5... I, I would guess... Do you just put the knight on e5 and hope that the king... I would guess you, you try knight e7. Mm -hmm. And after rook a7, king e6, king, you go knight d5 or something. Okay, yeah. Um, just make it as difficult as possible for this king yeah. to come in because of a fork. Um, but I'm guessing rook a2 yeah. looks like good technique. Knight e3, king h5. Protect everything and yeah, the king's coming in. Problem is, uh, this is pretty much how the Jones game ended. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, it went similar to this and eventually black had to push forward. But, push uh, forward, but now. But yeah, I mean, eventually there's always going to be some rookie two and take. Yeah, sure. um, mm -hmm. 
King E4, then just G3 or something. Yeah, and Black's always going to be in 6 wang. Yeah. So, so you can push the F pawn forward, but the kings need to be placed the other way. You need the Black King on the G file so you can attack the G2 pawn. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if Black's King was super active on G5 or G4, um, then pushing F5 I think is fine. But once the F pawn moves now, it's going to be eternally weak. So, um, yeah, Maxime, in big trouble now. Wow. So much for our predictions, Dave. I know. <laughs> what were we thinking? <laughs> but it's, against... it's tricky. It's super, super tricky. Yeah. Uh, but we can we can blame him for making the losing move with uh, uh, within seconds. That's that's the one thing. But uh, but otherwise, I think he played a great game in in defense, um, and he just faced an extremely strong opponent today who uh, um, played played a great game and eventually cracked this one as well. Assuming knight h6, rook g3 happens. Yeah. Uh, if there, I'm sure there could be a twist to come here. So. <laughs> and Mag Magnus, I have just had word that your banter blitz against the challenges, it does start in just over an hour. Um, so it's up to you. Are you going to stay with us through the twists and turns in this endgame? You know or you don't want to leave this endgame right now. This, uh, is, this is the moment you've been waiting for for the last hour or so <laughs> yeah uh i think i have to i have to go though i have to to set up on on my end and um that's half an hour travel as well so uh, thank you so yes. much for joining us i mean we chose yeah. the right day as well with this game. <laughs> yeah it's, it's been it's been a great day uh, uh lots of exciting chess and uh this ending has sort of been at least for me the the crown the crown jewel as well so oh, you're gonna miss its great. climax as well i i know uh, but i feel like we've uh sort of we sort of reached it we 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 after a lot of back and forth we figured out everything and uh now we're just waiting for, for Fabio to execute it. Yes, uh, that's right. And best of luck against those, uh, those dangerous kids. Okay, I'll, right. I will show you one more thing. Okay, <laughs> hit us with it. <laughs> uh, 9 h 6. Okay. Uh, rook g3, knight g8, uh, king g4, king g6, king h4, knight, um, king h7, king h5. Knight e7. E7. What do you do? Uh, rook. <laughs> I was about to say rook a3, but then knight f5. Knight f5, yeah. <laughs> rook f3. Yeah, rook f3. Yeah. I'm sure that wins. Rook f3, yeah. king g7. And then rook but a3. Now we go here because now we're here. there's no oh, g7 square for the knight. That is amazing. That is incredible. Because Precision now the till the end. Were you talking to us and calculating that at the same time? Yes. <laughs> Trying to show off. <laughs> yeah, that's quite oh, important, that's, actually. Yeah. That's incredible that the king is on g7, so the knight doesn't have that g7 square that we've been talking about for the last two hours. Uh, wow. You know what? It's been a very difficult endgame, but after going through uh, this one with you, Magnus, a few things have started making sense. So it's been quite useful, actually, you know? It's been super useful for for me at the very least. So I'm hoping ho hoping you guys uh, yeah I loved it le learn as well. Imagine if one of us uh, or one of the viewers at home finally gets this end game once in their career. <laughs> the odds on that must be quite long, right? No, I think it's gonna happen for somebody. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for that moment. Okay, guys. Yeah, good okay, luck. Good luck for you. Thank for you. Your oh. Blitz, Magnus, and uh, everyone can watch it. It will start right after our uh, right after our broadcast for the candidates. Uh, Magnus is taking on uh, the challengers. Oh and, boy, uh, you could be stuck uh, here for a bit still. So. <laughs> we'll have that live right after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that will be a fun one to watch for sure, but uh, not quite as fun as this end game. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, in the current position, Vashili Grov, he has been thinking for a while, maybe he's, uh, he's just realizing now um, this Zugzwang, maybe he didn't see it coming, or maybe he's just trying to find the most tenacious defense. Um, either way, it does look like Fabiano Caruana, he's going to put himself right back into contention, Tanya. I mean, imagine the shakeup there, Caruana catching up with Vashili Grov, um, suddenly Nepo out in sole lead. 
Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> I'm just really glad that a day we had Magnus take us through this end game. Otherwise, we would have absolutely no idea, no head or tail of what is actually happening and understanding this key defense with Knight on G7 and why it's so important. And I think the other insight which he gave about Fabi really feeling it that whatever chances he had of creating a Zugzwang or making progress in this position was around these ideas of getting the king to F4. Uh, and it's, I mean, I think we can say it confidently that of course he wasn't aware of the position or the nitty gritties of it or the calculation involved. But once he reached it, he realized that this is where Black's troubles lie. And yeah. he's managed to create exactly what what we were looking at, but he's done it by playing it over the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's impossible for any human to kind of figure out all the possible permutations or the possible variations or the possible kind of breakthroughs. Um, and yeah, Fabi, he, he went around, I mean, like we did, he went around in circles for a while, but he did stumble across the right plan and he found a way to trick Vashil Agrav into um, allowing it. And um, I just want to say as well, one really instructive thing that um, I'm going to take away from this endgame is uh, Magnus, he did mention, um, I mean, this is why the top players are the top players. They work things out um, when they can't simply calculate. And you see this pawn, it covers these two squares. And the only other squares that white can penetrate on the king side, the right half of the board, um, are the f5 and h5 squares. And that's why the knight is needed on g7, um, because the knight here covers these two squares, the pawn covers these two squares, and white's king just cannot get through. Um, so yeah, it sounds basic when we get there, but um, it took us no, a long time to realize. Um, that's actually that that was... that's actually very well put. And also the knight on g7, it also stops the king from coming around the other way because you'll always have these mm -hmm. knight f5, knight g7 checks then. So you don't have to worry about the king d5, king d6, king e7 ideas either. Yeah. I mean, we've learned that knights on g7 or, or Fianchetto knights, they're perfect in two different endgames uh, when it's two bishops against the knight and clearly in this one as well. So, uh, yeah, instructive <laughs> This one stuff. we aren't forgetting for a long time. So king f4 played and now it looks like Maxime is actually in big trouble here. Uh, we couldn't really find a way for him to... He's gone for knight 86. So, David, this is the moment that we've all been waiting for for the last uh, several moves <laughs> because here we know that rook g is the move that makes sure that white can actually get the king to h5. Because it's a zugzwang after rook g3. Black has to fall back with the knight to g8. Uh, king e6, the problem with king e6 is that you've got... What happens after king e6? Do you just simply go rook g6? Um, good question, actually. Um, I think there's a few ways of doing it. So firstly, we can, uh, we can um, kick the knight back first. Knight and then five. I think... Oh, oh, knight f5, that's annoying. I really want to get the knight on g7 after all of this. Yeah, I was going to say rook h7, so you can never get to g7, but it's still not clear how to break uh, if you go back to like knight d6 or knight d4. Um, I guess look maybe now we come and around. David, look at this. Fabi has made the move rook g3. He this made is it incredible. Right? I mean, this is just such high class chess. It's 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 amazing. Yeah, I mean, he was away from the board. He came back, he saw that knight h6 had been played and bang root g3 um yeah i mean we're now on move what 69 and um i think from move 40 when we could see that this uh end game was inevitable already from there fabi was just trying to work out um how to get that zugzwang how to force black to give way and break that fortress and yeah it looks like he's he's odds on for victory now um i simply don't see any way for even bashir Graf to get counterplay or to get active with his knight get active with the king and once White's king gets to h5, like we saw in a couple of those variations earlier, it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah. About White's plan of getting that king to h5 has finally happened. The dream has been achieved. But now what is the winning plan here? So this was step one. Mm -hmm. uh, what's next? Step two, I guess, is to bring this king in at the right moment. At the mo if you do it immediately, I guess, uh, Maxime, he'll just try and kick that king as much as he can, he'll give a check. If we continue trying to attack this pawn, then another check, um, maybe slightly annoying. Um, I would be tempted to even just wait here. Um, one thing Magnus did that was quite instructive was just to play rook f2 at the right time, just to guard this pawn, make sure there's no attacks on it. Um, and if black's king steps forward, then now, um, still not completely obvious, but maybe we can try and come in with our king. And, and after now, knight f4, just go king f7. Yeah, although <laughs> this does involve some risk if black starts pushing forward and we've got to make sure this pawn survives somehow. Um, F5. Hmm. 
maybe we just wait. Sooner or later, Black's king will step forward and our king will target the black pawn. But yeah, I mean, definitely some accuracy required here after king e6. What, yeah, what would you say, Tanya? Do you wait? Do you go in immediately? I mean, we've been analyzing this position for a while and the whole idea and the concept has been for Fabi to get that king to h5 and then somehow start attacking the pawn, but it still needs to be timed pretty well. Uh, Black's idea seems to be to go king e5, knight f4 to create some pressure on white's cheap pawn. Uh, Dave, can we also just back up and see how Fabi actually managed to achieve this position with the king to h5? Yeah, so we left it here actually when we achieved this dream position that uh, we'd kind of stumbled across um, this Zug Swang and Black had to give way. He had to go back with the knight. He could also give way with the king. It would be very similar. And now the white king does step across and we get to h5 because after the king g6, Black could no longer um, kind of uh, control this square and protect his knight um, on g8. So yeah, um, no matter which way the king goes, Magnus showed this nice variation after king h7, but we do get our king into h5 and white would be winning. So, okay, Maxime decided to just allow that to happen and um, knight d5, and this is the current position. Um, rook f3 was a bit, yeah, a bit of a mysterious one for me. I don't think it was 100% necessary, but um, yeah, Fabi still in control. I would expect yes. something like rook f2 here. Yeah, there's one nice line after king g6. If white mm -hmm. does go king g6 immediately, black probably has to go knight e7 here because king e5, then you've got rook f5 and you take on d5 and you take on f6 and that king oh, pawn ending that's... is lost. That's nice. These simplifications, they're going to, I mean, this is going to be the idea all the time for white and this pawn just marches through. Um, that's why when, this, when you've got the same number of pawns, um, it's normally winning because you can kind of bully the opponent with these ideas of uh, exchanging, basically. But yeah, that's a nice spot. So king g6, like you say, knight e7 is pretty much forced. Knight e7 and, then and knight f5. Knight f5. Mm. You can go king h7. I really like that concept that you were talking about placing the knight on this two square diagonal and you know that there are no checks uh, anymore. Yeah. And maybe you can hope for trying to get g4, king g6. It's not really sure what black is playing next. Do you have to go king mm -hmm. e5, for example, here? Yeah. And Maybe also a just... quick update, Dave, that uh, yeah. Alexienko did make the move rookie for, so Grischuk and that game in big, big trouble now. Yeah, we could be about to see a result there. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Grischuk doesn't find a way to even fight on, and uh, he does throw in the towel. Um, but yeah, meanwhile, um, Fabi still has to be very, very precise. Uh, Maxime <laughs> is a trickster even in the end games, and he will fight to the bitter end. Um, oh wow, he did play... Am I right in seeing he's played g4? He's played g4. That is okay. a very committal move. <laughs> that is very commit. Uh, well, committal, yeah. I mean, uh, well, some of my, well, when I commentate on the Champions Chess Tour, I always get teased that I have commitment issues because I never want to push my pawns. <laughs> uh, but here, Fabi definitely doesn't have those commitment issues. Um, g4. I mean, and on Dave, the one I've hand, been it's... for a lot of years. I think I can agree with that. He's the one. <laughs> Yeah, big commitment commitment <laughs> issues here. Um, but so yeah, I mean, on the one played, but that means that at least Black doesn't have ninety seven knight f five ever. So now True. king g six is a big threat. Mm -hmm. King g six big threat, and maybe there's just no good move for Black. Um, on the one hand, you do fix this pawn, but the, on the other hand, somehow your pawn on g four it's almost getting traded in some lines. And if Black can remaneuver the knight round to e five somehow, then maybe it's not even winning it for White anymore. Um, but of course, the knight is very far away from getting to the e5. Um, it takes so, at least three more moves. So what you're saying is that if you go knight e7 with the idea of trying to get the knight to e5 with knight c6, there's also king h6 because f5 is always met by g5. So you're not mm -hmm. worried about offering the pawn trade with f5. Yeah, exactly. And I think the issue is that you can't get, well, you're just not in time to get to e5 because... It's not in time. Um, yeah, the pawn does drop. So yeah, Fabi, Magnus mentioned it, Fabi, he's very concrete. So he's not afraid of playing a risky move if he's worked out it works kind of just step by step. Um, so G4, maybe it does. Uh, it does indeed work. And if Black can't get his knight to E5, then White has the simple plan of just marching. I mean, okay, I don't even know what Black does. King E5, for example, the king comes in. Knight, knight F4 e is still possible, Knight F4? Mm-hmm. But king f7, and then we have our idea after knight d5, you go rook f5 and you pick up the knight on d5. Yep, 
get rid of that beastie and take this pawn. And your remaining pawn wins. Yeah, it looks like Zugzwang's coming. It's very nice how Fabi has just maneuvered for the last so many moves. And then when he calculates concretely and he sees that this is the moment to go in with G4, he does it. He's not postponing that decision anymore. So it just shows absolute alertness. I mean, these guys have been playing for, uh, for what, over five hours right now? Yeah, and he's or, still... Or, yeah, and to, and to see the G4, accurate. it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, just, I mean, we earlier we were kind of praising Vashil Grav and rightly so because he defended so well throughout that opening middle game end game. And um, I mean, kudos to Fabi though, just putting that pressure on, even when his opening didn't immediately win, even when he didn't find any immediate wins in that kind of middle game, uh, early end game, to keep looking for chances. Um, I mean, that's very professional, at least just to kind of take no risks at all, uh, come really well prepared and then put pressure on and hopefully uh, the opponent cracks at the end. Um, yeah, I can't see a defense here. I'm, tr I'm looking desperately for black. And uh, the problem is as well, king f7, if you try and kind of box in the white king so it can't uh, it can't walk forward, then um, you've probably got a few ways to win. But even just, for example, I mean, making a pass, um, even just king h6 and g5 is, is now nice. a bit of a threat. Yeah, yeah. king h6 is very nice. Yeah, g5 is a big threat. Um, because that And I think after knight e7 as well, you can go g5 in this position. Oh, that's nice, yeah. Tanya. Knight f5. g8, there's king h7. And f5, there's g6, knight g6, rook f5. Yeah. Um, so knight takes, rook f5, and the knight drops. Um, how about if king f6? This, okay, this one must be lost after just g7. I was just, uh, yeah, I was just hoping that this should be lost somewhere. <laughs> You might not even be able to give up the knight. For, I was hoping to give up the knight for the pawn and then kind of run with the king and pawn, but I don't think there's even a way to do that. White will sooner or later just kind of get rid of this knight. Yeah. King e5, you don't even care about king e7. You just go rook e3 and go rook e7. <laughs> Cynical. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, after wow. g4, looks like Fabi's on course. A pretty spotless game by Fabi as well, no? Getting in this amazing prep. Uh, not winning right out of the opening, but making sure that Maxime is down on the clock, being the one who's put the pressure on, and uh, then eventually getting into this end game, which looks like Maxime should be holding, and he does in certain ways, but needs to be precise. But then it's not about one mistake. You know, we saw that moment where Maxime uh, messed it up when we saw that he did achieve that idea of trying to get the knight to g7, but then he didn't. Is somewhere he let go of that for the idea of 986. But I think it's the whole game. It's building up the pressure through the game and then your opponent just cracks at some point. Yeah, that's the key. I mean, from my own personal experience, it's always when your opponent thinks they're out of danger, when they're so close to holding the game, that's when the mistakes happen. And we did note that Maxime, his key mistake, not putting the knight in g7, he played knight h6 instead within a couple of seconds. So um, maybe it's just that, like you say, the nervous energy that's kind of building up and building up. And just when you, you're within touching distance of your goal, saving the game, um, that's when the mistake came. And it was so natural as well, not to think that the knight belongs on h6, because from there it can jump to e5, which looks like such a pretty square as well. Uh, but knowing what we do now, after that little masterclass we had with the knight on g7, you know where the knight belongs and why it belongs there to control all these squares, the g5, f5, e5 square, so white's king can't come in, most importantly, the h5 square. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's so instructive. That was quite a masterclass, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, I mean, this. I get tongue-tied around Magnus sometimes because it's such an honor having the world champion there. But I mean, just to see his passion of learning something new yeah. about an endgame today. Um, and just how excited he was about this position. I mean, this position is a commentator's nightmare, David. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, because you're constantly struggling to find and understand these ideas. But we had him uh, and he was so determined to get to the bottom <laughs> of it, to, to really understand the whole truth here. Uh, that's why he is the world champion. Yeah, exactly. And uh, like you say, commentator's nightmare. Uh, we want positions where we can calculate, have some fun sacking pieces. And um, But yeah, that one, yeah, that one you either know or you don't. And OK, King E5 has been played in the meantime. Um, yep, I expect to see King G6 simply. So and King G6 no matter... and Knight F4, you want to go King F7? Yes. Um, so Black's a bit stuck. Maybe he can go King E4, but then I'll just move my Rook back. Um, and yeah, I think this pawn is just dropping. We don't see um, any way to save it. 
I don't see it. Knight d5, you just take the pawn anywhere. Yep. Yep. Always give back that exchange to promote our pawn. And uh, yeah, it looks like Zooks win. Okay, and Sasha see... hasn't made a move. Sasha hasn't made a move after rook e4. Let's just bring that position up. Uh, we'll, of course, come back to this one. Uh, rook e4 played by Alexienko. And uh, yeah, black in big, big trouble here. e8 is a threat. Rook e8, white just goes on to advance the a pawn. Not really seeing a way here. Yeah, I'm not seeing one either. Um, there must be maybe some kind of trick. Maybe rook h7 or maybe you can try rook h7 mm -hmm. um, or rook g7. I'm not sure the difference, but OK, rook g7, maybe there's bishop e5. So rook h7. I just want to keep my rooks on light squares when there's a dark square bishop. And my my idea now is maybe your other rook's free to, I don't know. I'm not even sure what it's doing, but <laughs> at least your other rook's free temporarily. And can white, does white have time to go bishop d8? After rook h7, just making sure that your rook doesn't, ah. uh, no, I meant like before going a4 okay. so that your rook is trapped on g8. Ah, oh, that is nasty. Also, you still have king h3. You need to move your king so that your g pawn starts pushing. We do have a result, uh, David, let's go back to the game because... Ah, uh, Maxime, Maxime has resigned. Wow. No, wait, what? No. Wait, surely not. I think they must have just put the kings on the wrong squares initially. But I, this one, it was a win for white. I can see now on the board, the kings are on light squares. Yeah. That means white won. All right. So the result of this one is that Fabi has won his game. What an incredible game by Fabi, which means that he does. Uh, he's half a point behind Jan Napomniachtchi, but he has caught up with Maxime. And in their uh, in their head-to-head -head score, uh, uh, Fabi will have the better tiebreak. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and that could be a key factor, right, at the end. It is a key factor because the tie breaks here are, the first tie break is your uh, your score against each other, the second one is the number of wins, and in that right now between these two, Fabi clearly leads, And but more than that, more than the result, just what a dominating performance this game was by Fabi, just incredible. It really comes across to show that he prepared so hard for this game. He <laughs> really petrified. put in a lot of effort. How terrified will his opponents be in future thinking, oh my God, he's got all these amazing novelties, all these peace sacrifices lined up in the opening. Um, that's going to be scary for, for his future opponents, right? I mean, the guy gave up three pawns, gave up that bishop on c4 and, and was blitzing out move after. It is very scary to know how well prepared your opponent is, really. That is so true. Uh, and it's a nightmare. Uh, as Magnus himself uh, described it, a complete horror to play that position. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's a horror to play the Poison Pawn Night off at the best of times, let alone when you're <laughs> facing one of the best prepared uh, players in the world. And I mean, his future opponents, some of them might have been thinking, OK, let's try the Night off against Fabi, but I doubt they'll be thinking that anymore. Um, I mean, that's probably just one of several ideas he had lined up for this event. Yeah. And um, yeah, impressive, impressive stuff from Carol. And that's a big, that's a big blow to Maxime as well, who, of course, is relying on his Night off for the candidates. And now it just means that he needs to find something about this. He needs to do something about this. Yeah, he probably spent the last month or two just covering all the holes in his opening repertoire. I mean, especially in the Nidorf, and suddenly there's a new one that needs to be plugged. Uh, yeah. A new hole that needs uh, needs to be dealt with in the opening. And um, yeah, that's not a good sign because it's clear he doesn't really have a backup plan or a backup plan that's kind of tried and, trust, uh, tried and tested at least. Um, so yeah, not ideal for Vashi Legrand fans today, not just on the leaderboard, but um, also in terms of the opening. It's also, um, yeah, a bit of a bad day, but okay, positive signs to take away. He did fight very, very well. He did handle the opening, the middle game um, decently, just uh, a natural slip in a end game that was difficult for, I think, everyone in the world. <laughs> um, even the world champion said he, he would have struggled to hold that one. Dave, this last position that we do have in front of mm -hmm. us, before we move on to the final game, just break it down for us. Why did Maxime resign here and what's going on here? Yeah, Maxime, he resigned simply because he can't hold this pawn anymore. Um, he would 
make a draw, actually, if the pawns disappeared, but there's just no way to do that. Um, Black's knight is currently tied down to this pawn. Um, we mentioned if he gives a check on f4, um, he could also give a check on e7. It's pretty much the same thing, but white will just march in further with the king and slowly, um, eventually, black is going to be in Zugzwang. He can try and exchange a pawn, but that won't help. White's pawn will win the day. And um, yeah, there's always, as Tanya mentioned earlier, this trick of if the knight does step back to defend its pawn, there's always the trick of sacrificing the rook for it. And uh, by hook or by crook, white will win that pawn, will be able to get rid of the knight and will make a new queen. So um, yeah, Maxim, he just saw the end coming after king g6 and he decided not to fight anymore. Uh, personally, I might have tried, a, I don't know, tried a trick or two, tried to create some knight fork, but uh, yeah, clearly there was no way to do that. And uh, yep, he did resign after a hard, hard battle. A very, very tough battle. And I have to say, this has definitely been the game of the round. In fact, it could be the game of the candidate so far. I mean, just from start to finish, absolute class by both players. Uh, Maxime really showing A-class defense, holding on to every opportunity till that one moment which he messed up uh, with that knight on h6, knight on g7. Meanwhile, Fabi just building pressure throughout the game until his opponent cracked. Uh, just the kind of chess you expect in the candidates, the tournament that decides who gets the spot to fight for the world championship.